Hi Year 4, so we're going to focus on a new poem today in our reading lesson and this is another poem written by the poet Valerie Bloom. And then when we finish the lesson we're going to listen to another chapter from our class text. Our Viper skill is vocabulary and we're going to listen and discuss poetry and think about those words that have been used by the poet that makes the poem interesting. We're going to read another poem today, written by Valerie Bloom. Today's poem is another river poem, and it's a poem about the journey of a river, but something slows the journey down. See if you can work out what is slowing the river down. So before we start, let's have a look at this picture. Think about the journey of a river. What do you th think will happen next in this picture? Pause the video while you have a think and I'll join you in a moment. So this is the start of a river and we can see a stream running down the mountainside here from the source. And we know that this will eventually turn into a river and eventually make its way to another body of water such as a lake or the sea in this photograph. We're going to have a look at some of the tricky words now that we'll find in the poem today. Let's see if we can read them together. So we've got the word ancient, poisonous, wrappers. Let's read those together. Ancient, poisonous, wrappers. So if something is ancient, it's very old. Poisonous means that if you if something is poisonous, it can make you ill. And wrappers it's plastic or paper packaging, so you could have a sweet wrapper or a chocolate wrapper or a crisp wrapper, something like that. Let's have a look at this word here. What is the root word in the word whispered? Whispered. Yes, that's right. Well done. The root word is whisper. And we've got the ed suffix used there. And here we have another word that's been used in today's poem, and it's from our year three, four um, spelling list. Let's have a look at this word together. This is breathe. Breathe. Can you have a little think about how you might spell this word? What could help you to remember it? Pause the video, have a go, and I'll join you in a moment. So here we've got some of the vocabulary that we're going to find in today's poem. The first word here is limped. Limped. If you limp, it's difficult to walk. This word says seethe, seethe. Now sometimes that can be used as another word for anger, if you're angry. But in the poem, it's also a word to show if something is bubbling or boiling. And so the word seethe today is used to mean bubble. Clogged. Clogged means if something is blocked or filled up by something. And garbage. Garbage is another word for rubbish or waste. Have a go at saying those words, shouting them, whispering them, and have a go at acting some of them out if you can. So we're going to read another poem written by Valerie Bloom. It's another river poem and it's called I Asked the River. And we're going to do a my turn now where I'd like you just to listen and then we'll read together in just a moment. So again you can see that this poem is written in verses like the previous poem we've looked at last this week. It's got four lines in each verse and it rhymes just like the river poem at the start of the week. Again not all poems rhyme but this one does and it's written as a question and answer. So the reader is asking a question and then the river is answering. So I'm going to read the poem and I'd like you just to listen. I Asked the River by Valerie Bloom. Why do you run? I asked the river. So fast I can't compete. I run, the river said, because I have some streams to meet. Where do you go? I asked the river, and what do you do there? I go to the valley, the river said, 
where I wash the rushes hair. Why do you sing? I asked the river, such a sweet and happy tune. Because, the river smiled, I'm having lunch with the sea at noon. Why do you laugh? I asked the river. You'll share the joke, I suppose. I woke the mountain, the river grinned, by tickling his toes. Then the river shuddered, groaned and sighed. The song of the streams and the laughter died, and it whispered sadly, I can't, I can't, as it limped along like an ancient aunt. Now why do you wait? I asked the river, and why is your current so slow? Something holds me back, it said, its voice was faint and low. And is that why you're getting small? Is that why you sigh? I sigh, the river said, because I know that soon I'll die. Why don't you fight for your life? I asked. You only foam and seethe. My lungs are clogged, the river moaned, and I can hardly breathe. Perhaps a rest. I told the river, would help to clear your head. I cannot rest, the river said, there's garbage in my bed. What's this garbage? I asked, disturbed, which is clogging up your sand. Poisonous waste and wrappers like this, which just fell from your hand. Did you spot what was slowing the river's journey down? Here we have this word garbage. In the poem, the river is saying there's garbage in my bed. Well, that's the riverbed there. And with the, the poet is telling us here that there is garbage. Remember that word from earlier on in the lesson? Rubbish. There's rubbish in the, on the riverbed. And We've got poisonous waste and wrappers, which we can see in this picture here and this person here throwing litter into the river. And it's the garbage, the rubbish that is slowing the river down. So we're going to reread together now. So this is an our turn bit of the lesson. So I'm going to read it and I'd like you now to join in with me. I Asked the River by Valerie Bloom. Why do you run? I asked the river. So fast I can't compete. I run, the river said, because I have some streams to meet. Where do you go? I asked the river. And what do you do there? I go to the valley, the river said, where I wash the rushes hair. Why do you sing? I asked the river such a sweet and happy tune. Because, the river smiled, I'm having lunch with the sea at noon. Why do you laugh? I asked the river. You'll share the joke, I suppose. I woke the mountain, the river grinned, by tickling his toes. Then the river shuddered, groaned and sighed. The song of the streams and the laughter died, and it whispered sadly, I can't, I can't, as it limped along like an ancient aunt. Now why do you wait? I asked the river, and why is your current so slow? Something holds me back, it said, its voice was faint and low. And is that why you're getting small? Is that why you sigh? I sigh, the river said, because I know that soon I'll die. Why don't you fight for your life? I asked. You only foam and seethe. My lungs are clogged, the river moaned, and I can hardly breathe. Perhaps a rest, I told the river, would help to clear your head. I cannot rest, the river said, 
there's garbage in my bed. What's this garbage? I asked disturbed, which is clogging up your sand. Poisonous waste and wrappers like this, which just fell from your hand. Okay, so it's a your turn bit of the lesson now. You're going to read the poem independently. And as you do, I want you to look out for some new exciting words. So remember, when we do this in school, N-E-W means new exciting words. And I'd like you to, as you're reading the poem, think about a layered approach today. So everybody's going to start off with chili one. So you're going to find any new exciting words in the poem. And then when you've done that, I'd like you to progress, if you can, to chili two. So you're going to explain what these new exciting words mean. Now, you could use a dictionary or an online dictionary or the vocabulary pages earlier in today's lesson, if you find one of the words that we've already discussed. And then Chili 3, you're going to move on to, when you've done the Chili 1 and the Chili 2, suggest any words that the poet could up level. So are there any words in this poem that you think that they could up level to? So I want you to carry on watching the video and pause at each page. So again, you don't need to rewind at this point. So pause each page for as long as you need and then move on to the next page and pause that to look out for your new exciting words and I'll join you when you're ready. OK, to finish off our lesson today, we're going to think about the performance poetry that we're working towards on Friday. So what I'd like you to do now is have a think about some of the actions that you could use for each each verse. And I'd like you to look at it, at least one verb in each verse to help you with your actions. Remember, your verbs are your doing words. So I've picked out run and wash here, run in the first verse and wash in the second verse and that will help me to think of some actions that I could use for these verses. Then we're going to have a think about reading with expression and so I'd like you to have a think about the punctuation used throughout the poem to help with your expression. So here I've highlighted the question marks and that will help you with the way that you read the poem so that you can change the expression in your voice. So I'm going to give you some time now to have a little practice with your actions and expression and then I'll join you in a moment um, to finish the lesson. And finally, a think question. So we found that this poem had lots of questions in it. What question would you ask the river? Have a think, write it down if you'd like to and then Mrs Price will pick up with this tomorrow. And don't forget to stay and listen to the next chapter of our class text. Now we're going to read chapter 15, The Greatest Idea in the World. That Thursday night, while Mum was at work, instead of doing my homework, I took my Tintin pencil case and my exercise book and went and sat down by the window in the kitchen. I wanted to come up with a plan just like Tom and Josie and Michael had done and thought that if I sat there maybe my brain would come up with something exciting all on its own. I have a desk in my room but I like sitting in the kitchen more because then I can see the sky and the whole city too. Tom says it doesn't matter how big or small a flat is if it's on the top floor, it becomes a penthouse. That's the kind of house that movie stars live in. I guess they must like sitting in kitchens and looking at skies and cities too. I waited for a long time for my brain to think of something. But when mum came home, she found me still sitting at the kitchen table, pressing the snowy and Captain Haddock buttons on my pencil case. I couldn't think of anything. 
not even after she came and sat with me to watch the sunset. I love watching the sunset with Mum. She calls it the magic hour because you can see colours you won't ever see again and birds that might fly away forever swimming across the skies together. But I can only ever do it properly with Mum. I've tried to watch the sunset on my own and feel just as happy but I can't seem to do it at all. It just doesn't work. By dinner time I still hadn't thought of anything so I went straight to bed to see if my brain could think of things better when it was lying down. But I fell asleep instead and had a nightmare that was so scary it made me wake up. I had dreamt of being on a piece of wood in the middle of a dark sea. At first it had been quiet but then to my right a girl had begun to cry and she was about to be swallowed by a giant whale and suddenly on my left my dad was shouting for help from a sinking boat. And no matter how hard I tried or how much I wanted to, I couldn't help the girl or stop my dad from disappearing into the water. If you've ever woken up after a nightmare when it's, when it's pitch black and so late that nothing in the world is awake, you'll know it isn't nice at all. When I woke up, I couldn't hear anything or see anything. So for a moment, I wasn't sure if I was awake or still in my nightmare. But then I heard one of the mice squeaking in the kitchen and I knew I was awake. That's a good thing about animals. They always let you know they're around, especially when they're hungry. And if they're around, then you know you're real and the world around you is real too. I was feeling hot and damp, so I got up and pulled back the covers to make sure I hadn't wet the bed. Luckily I hadn't. I hate wetting the bed. I used to do it all the time after Dad died. But then, when I turned seven, something happened and I stopped doing it. Maybe when you turn seven, your body knows you've become too old to wet the bed anymore. I didn't want to lie back down in case I had the nightmare again, so I tiptoed into the kitchen to get a glass of water and see the mice. Mum says that years ago, an old woman who bred all sorts of exotic animals used to live in our flat. That could be why we found a small nest of bright yellow snakes in our kitchen wall last summer, or why we have two mice living with us. But I don't mind, I like mice because they make good friends. For just a tiny piece of food, they can become your friends for life. They disappear if they don't like you. So you always know if they're going to be your friends right from the start. And it's always good to know from the start because it saves you from wasting your best cheese. After I got a drink of water, I went back to my room. But I was still too scared to go back to sleep. So I sat on the floor and got one of my favourite Tintin comics from underneath my bed. It was the one about a rich old opera singer who comes to stay with Captain Haddock, even though he really doesn't want her to, and whose green diamond gets stolen. I couldn't really concentrate on the story because all I could think about was Armet and his sister Syrah being in the sea. But then, just as I was thinking how the rich old opera singer looked like the Queen, except with a much bigger nose, it suddenly happened. I had it. An idea. And it was without doubt quite possibly the greatest idea in the world. I leapt right into my head, just like a giant frog, and jumped around until I knew it had to work. It just had to. You can always tell when you've had a great, the greatest idea in the world because it pops up from nowhere. Ordinary ideas take an awfully long time to become an idea because they're ordinary so your brain can't get excited about them and has to make them slowly, like thousands of boring bread rolls being baked in an extra slow oven. But when an idea is truly great, it doesn't take any time at all. It just suddenly appears and makes your eyes go wide and your brain feel as if it's just been pushed out of bed. Jumping to my feet, I got my exercise book and drew out my plan. And this is what the greatest idea in the world looked like. And there you can see a picture of the greatest idea. When I had finished, 
I stared at it and went over it again and again in my head. I knew right away that it would work, but only if Tom and Josie and Michael helped and kept it all a secret. I got back into my bed and lay there, wishing for the morning to come. Because as soon as it did, I was going to put the greatest idea in the world into action and help Armit find his family. I knew it was going to be the most exciting thing any of us had ever done and there was a chance it might get us into trouble too. What I didn't know was just how dangerous an adventure it was going to be and quite how much trouble it was going to get us in. <laughs>